The rear brakes are going to be a lot more difficult on the Mark 7 Golf R than on the GTI. And here's what you're going to need. Um, for starters, the Golf R has an electronic parking brake. So you're going to need Vacom and a Windows computer. This is a Mac, but I'm running Windows under uh, virtualization. You're going to need a compression kit. It's, it's almost impossible to, um, to do the rear brakes without one of these kits. You can try it, but it's very difficult. You're going to need a triple square set. Most notably, I think it's the 12 that you're going to need. Um, for this exercise, you'll need, of course, uh, your Stop Tech rotors, your EBC Red Stuff pads, and of course, you're gonna need a Golf R. Uh, let's look at first the um, what the stock rotors look like. This is 28,000 miles, and um, from August 2015 to May of 2017, it's about a year and a half, uh, over a year and a half on these. Other side, right now the. Um, the car is off. The emergency parking brake is disengaged, but uh, it's not going to work out for you unless you go and start off with step one being to get load up VAGCOM and plug in and do this. Uh, uh, make sure your battery is fully charged before you do this. And we're going to walk through that now. I'll post the instructions with the link below. Okay, so we have released the uh, the rear um, brake caliper, parking brake on both sides via VACOM. So that's all done now. Uh, now we're going to try to get uh, everything off. So let me just get things started first and then I'll come back and show you guys what I've done so far. Alright, right now I am right here loosening up the bolt that's uh, right there. So it's above the, uh, the drivetrain or the axle, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that is it. I'm just basically loosening the top bolt up. I couldn't figure out a way to get the actual piston off. So I'm basically got the carrier and the piston are still connected, but uh, for now I'm just gonna remove the whole assembly and see how to figure it out, take it apart. Okay, so now we have the bolts at the top right here and at the bottom. Let's see if we can get that picture here. Uh, right here, right there. Those are both loosened up. So we're just gonna take them apart here and see if we can get this whole assembly off. So I'm just, I'm just hand loosening those two bolts that were the, uh, the M14 triple square is what I needed for those two. All right, well, the good news is after removing those two bolts, I am able to move this guy off now. Let's just hope we take this thing off that we uh, are able to figure out the rest of the situation. Whew, all right. Now, this is off. We've got our two pads here. It is hanging by the uh, electronic control of the parking brake and the brake line. There's one. And there is two. Both of our pads are out. I still think though that the carrier and the actual brake piston should have been separated. I just don't know how, how that would happen. Huh, it just comes right out. Well, that's interesting. And keep in mind guys, I'll, I'll reshoot this video on the other side too when we're done so we can uh, we can kind of all figure out with each other how this works. But while I have this off, let's go ahead and proceed with getting the rotor off. Okay, we have our T30. There we go, that's out. This come right off. Nope, gotta bang it with a mallet. Just hoping for the best. There it goes. All right, the OEM rotor is off. Let's hit this with some brake clean and get it cleaned up. Yeah, that should do, okay.
So while we're doing this, the, um, the Mark 7 GTI rear brakes video from uh, Shop Daps was with a, um, a manual handbrake. And it offers a completely different situation than what we were presented with for this, huh? And this is a completely different, uh, this whole setup. This is more keen. I had to watch a bunch of Audi A4, uh, A5 videos to figure all that out. We have our rotor. We're gonna take the, the L sticker off of here. For, find the proper spot for the T30 bolt. There we go. Hold that steady. Okay, she's on. Now we gotta grab um, we gotta grab the toolkit to get this caliper, the piston here pushed back. So let's uh, pause for a second and get that ready. We're on the other side now, so we're gonna start by loosening up. Yeah, that, that should do something. Okay, both bolts are loose. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Actually, I'm gonna grab a screwdriver first before we do this. There we go, that's off. All right. Grab these pads. Now the one towards the outside of the wheel uh, has no clips on it. The one towards the piston does have clips. Keep that in mind. Now this guy can just slide right out of there. I'm gonna hit this a few times before I actually take it to the Torx. It was not our saving grace. There we go. Grab. Oh, sorry. Didn't want to blind you guys with stuff there. New England is rough on cars, man. You guys down south are probably looking at this going, what the hell? It's like 50,000 miles, 100,000 miles from this thing. Nope. 28. This time I'm putting the screw on the drill before I put the rotor on. Okay, lined up. Okay, we're in. Now on both sides, I'm gonna show you guys uh, back to back pushing the piston in. Let's uh, get that prepped. The uh, left-hand drive one, we're going to put this guy in through here, just like this. Then you see our caliper, let's move this over a little bit, there we go. That's our caliper right there. Um, we're going to use, try to find the right size here for this. We've got these two little holes right here on the edges. We're going to put this in. That's a pretty good fit. So, just through here. I don't know, 
hope you guys can see this okay. We're gonna turn this so we get everything uh, lined up in there. If this part does not come out very well, there's plenty of videos online on how to do this. We're going to get this lined up here and we're gonna twist this until we get it right flush. Okay, so you see right here, we got everything kind of assembled like that. Oh, that's visible. And then we're gonna turn this the opposite direction of what you would think and push it in. Just like that. Now we push it in, then we're gonna turn it back out. And twist this guy, get it off. I just knows I got a little bit of, uh, of lube there, so I need to take care of that. Okay, this might look a little better for you guys, we'll see. Thread this through. Sorry for the wind noise. Now this piston is pretty much all the way through. Put this in there. Push this up against those two holes. And then thread this down. Now we can start twisting. It doesn't take very much for it to bottom out and come right out. Okay, so we got our pads. Remember what I mentioned earlier? The clip was on the inside, and it actually says here, break in right there. Um, before I do this, let's have a little bit of brake clean. Not, don't try to get on the rubber that I'll show you on the outside pieces here. Now, EBC sent me a couple things extra. They sent me um, clips. And if you look on the stock pads, we've got clips on the back of these. They also sent me some caliper lube. So I'm pretty sure what we're gonna do is we're going to load up the carriers first with the pads. Then we're gonna slip, we're gonna slip the carrier onto the caliper first. Then we're gonna slip the pads in there. So let's uh, get the caliper lube and apply it. All right, we're back in business. So I'm going to put the uh, caliper lube, sparingly it says, on the, uh, the bits here. Okay. But you don't want it gunking up too much. Now we're gonna put this back in. I forgot to add the pad pieces to the back. Pretty easy to do. Just wraps around like this. Clips in the back, just like that. Then we insert in, push this straight back. And get these into place. Okay, those front pads are in, as you guys can see here. Gotta be careful with that, don't we? Then we got our other one here with the bigger clip. Let's affix the back to this thing. It's like this. Boom, boom. Same thing applies. But on this one, you got this clip on the top, which is gonna push against you. Just keep that in mind. sure it's snug. Looks good to me. Now we're going to put this back up here on top of the rotor. So 
what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the other side. I'm gonna leave this here for now. I'm gonna go to the other side. And we're going to uh, push the piston in again and make sure we did it all the way and then we will apply the pads to the other side. Well, should be good enough. I've squeezed it pretty hard there. Let's proceed with putting the uh, caliper lube on this side. Get all that stuff off your fingers. And insert it back into the thing here. Okay, putting it into these two piston holes here. All right. We have our pads. Remember the spring side goes in the end. Guys, you have to put uh, these pieces around. It's not easy, it's not hard to, uh, it's not easy to screw up. There, and for the rear one, the inside one. Just like that. There we go. There we go. Got that in there. Well, the inside was much simpler. Oops, wrong way though. Okay. Well, those pads are in. Let's try to put this on. Oh yeah, this one's going much farther. See, from the last one. Just need to line up the, uh, the right location for the bolts. Yeah, much better. This is not done yet on the bottom, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up the top and just thread it down. Now you guys are going to see me under here for a second. Ah, I think I was just going a little too far. There we go. I was uh, I was pushing the rotor too far, or the piston too far into the caliper in the rotor. All right, we're going to hand tighten these up, and then we're going to the other side. The wind. Uh, the issue was that uh, on this side I had not uh, put the piston in far enough, so I took the uh, compression tool back to it one more time, and it fit in just like a charm. So, when in doubt, turn like a half turn more on the piston thing, even though it takes all your all your strength, and that will get it done. So, uh, let's fix these two bolts back to the top and bottom. Now remember, if these bolts in the rear, you're gonna need 200 newton, newton meters of, uh, of power, of pressure. I'm gonna use my breaker bar to get them as tight as I can, and then come in with a torque uh, wrench, which is much longer, so it's a bit more unwieldy. Uh, but that last little half inch or so of turn to get to the um, the newton meter spec that I need to to lock these brake uh, brake pads down. Now that we are done with the rear brakes, don't forget to go back inside, open up VCDS, and. Uh, fix the coating to uh, close the bad rear parking brake, emergency brake again. Okay, we're going to end lining change mode. Sure you heard that. Finished correctly, it says. It said to wait a few more seconds though before you hit stop, and then you can hit stop and close out. Then just power cycle the car and you are good to go.